Hello, everybody out there. Um, this is uh, working with your hands in the Lord, and this will be the last one. <laughs> this is the last of this uh, series or whatever you want to call it, study or teaching. So this is the last one. Um, it's a little bit different, but um, it still goes along with the working and laboring, and and mainly it's about um, uh, like the title says, vinegar, uh, sweat, and labor, right, or work. Um, and I was reading about this, and I don't know, I was just studying, and I thought it was interesting how um, the times that you look at sweat in the Bible, you know, from Genesis, and then with Jesus, it's mainly like, you know, and I, and I did this study when I was comparing um, Jesus and um, the bride of Christ and Adam and Eve, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if the sweat, because he, because Adam had to work and sweat and stuff right with the ground okay and um and then jesus you know we'll say he sweats blood and, and things like that, or like blood and then all that kind of stuff so uh let's get started and it goes a little bit deeper at the end too so it's pretty cool it's kind of different okay so um first let's get started with um man is commanded to work and to sweat right okay and we can see that in genesis 3 uh, 17 through 19 which says this and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Okay, so you see in verse 19, uh, In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread, uh, till you return to the ground. Okay, so I think that's interesting because, okay, Jesus is the bread of life for one thing, but also it's the sweat of your face. You have to sweat, okay? And um, what made me think about this is I was uh, working outside, and um, I, you know, you sweat, and some people like sweat smells different on some other people, but sometimes sweat can smell like vinegar. Okay, so and then I don't know, just the, the thoughts of Jesus having to taste the vinegar, which we could see in uh, Luke twenty two forty four, and being in agony. Okay, like some people go to work and they're in agony, right? He prayed uh, m more earnestly, and his sweat was was at. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Okay, so see it's like this sweat is going to the ground and also Adam returns to the ground from which he came dust to dust, right? So, and Jesus goes into the heart of the earth, into the ground, right? Or the other dimension, however you want to say it. But it says in the Bible that hell is in that Tartarus and things like that are in the center of the earth, right? In the heart of the earth. So, um... Uh, you see that? I don't know. I just those kind of went comparison with me with the sweat and with the ground. I was like, oh, that's what kind of made me start thinking about this. Because um, sometimes sweat smells like vinegar. Okay. Um, all right. And look, if we look in John nineteen twenty eight through thirty, it says this. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. Okay, so you see... He didn't drink the vinegar, he just tasted the vinegar. You know, you can just get something close to your mouth and just touch it with your tongue and taste it, but that doesn't mean you take it into yourself, right? Um, that he didn't, like, drink it, you know? Okay, and we're going to see why in, in a minute. So you see that it's like the vinegar, and he's going through his his work, his main work that he did, right? This is his work. is to It is finished, right? He, he took care of all of the sins and everything else, you know, everything spiritually and physically and everything. He fixed it all. Like, um, he fixed our body, he fixed our soul, he fixed our spirit, he fixed our DNA, and he fixed our sins. He fixed everything, right? Okay. And we won't see the complete um, glory of that until the resurrection. Okay. 
um, of our resurrection, right? Okay, because he's already resurrected, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, okay, so also we can see in Psalms uh, 69, 21, this is the prophecy of what we just listened to. They gave him um, also guile for, they, I'm sorry, they gave me also guile for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me uh, vinegar to drink, okay? Um, um, okay, so what's interesting about the whole vinegar thing and why he didn't drink it is because um, it was sorcery. It was drugs, okay? It was, um, like, let me read you this. Uh, when I was doing my study, I came upon this from uh, house2house.com, Bible questions. It says, um, uh, the drink offered to Jesus was a cheap Roman vinegar wine, okay? Vinegar wine. Um, which had a drug mixed to dull the senses, a drug, sorcery, okay? Um, it was the custom of the Romans to offer a man being crucified drugged wine so that he might more easily endure his cross. Jesus refused, refused the wine, however apparently so that, uh, yeah, however apparently so that he could go through the suffering with a clear mind, okay? And that's what we should also do too, okay? He didn't, he didn't want it to be easy or any kind of escape or anything like that. If it's the Father's will for him to go through all of this physically and spiritually taking God's wrath for sin and everything and, you know, death and, and all of that stuff and defeating death and Hades and going down, you know, he didn't want his mind to be dulled or, you know, unclear or anything, right? He was, you know, focused on what his work was to do then. Okay, so you see that? So that's why he didn't, he didn't take it, okay? Um, now, with Jesus, and we're going to talk about that in a minute also, okay? But also, with Jesus, uh, we have rest from work, okay? And we can see that in Hebrews um, 4, 3 through 11, which says this. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Isn't that interesting? So it's like, uh, it said that he was slain from the foundation of the world, that some of the saints were uh, uh, slain, also killed from the foundation of the world. Also, like here, the rest was done from the foundation of the world. Um, you know, we don't have to work to go to heaven or anything like that anymore because Jesus made it possible for us to go there, right? For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, If they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Amen. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, mm -hmm. as God did from his. Right, so it's going back to the beginning of the world with Genesis, right? So he's saying like, since the, the Father rested, we also now rest in Jesus, right? We don't have to labor to get to heaven, right? We don't have to labor to get to the Father. I think that's pretty cool. Or sacrifices and things like that to take away for the sins, because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And I like that because it's like labor to just to believe. You know, that's basically saying enter into that rest. Labor to enter into that rest. Labor to believe and be saved. Amen. And that's not hard, right? He said, um, um, my burden is light. And my yoke is light and my burden is easy. Or my burden is, yeah, you know. Okay, you know what I'm saying. I guess, uh, I guess I get those two mixed up, right? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Okay, that's what it is. So, um. Um, and then just like his commandments, his commandments are very easy. Just love one another, okay, and believe. Believe on him who sent him, Jesus, and believe in Jesus, the Son of God. It's, it's easy stuff to do, okay? Um, so it's not hard work even, okay? 
um, Jesus did all the hard work for us and finished it, okay? We can see that in John 22, or 21, 25, which says, and, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they were, uh, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written, amen. So isn't that awesome? So we don't even know all the stuff that he did for us, okay? We, we get seen through, you know, a glass or a mirror dimly, right? We see it that way. But, like, that's why, like, I, you know, I'll see certain stuff, like, about the DNA and about the water and the body and all that stuff that he fixed, okay? But then he goes even way beyond that. We don't even know all the awesome things that he did for us. Because in Romans, I believe it's Romans 8 or 5, it talks about how all of creation yearns to be put back like it was in the Garden of Eden, right? And that's why we'll have a new earth. And so it's interesting how, and then the animals and everything, because they were put into bondage and not, not because, you know, not, the animals didn't do anything to be put into bondage, right? It was Adam and, and Eve and Satan's fault. So all of creation is broken, even the animals and the earth itself and all this stuff. And it, all of them yearn to, for the manifestation of the sons of God so everything can be fixed. And they're waiting for G, what manifestation of the sons of God means when Jesus comes back, He'll fix everything, right? Completely as it was to be in the beginning and as in the heavenly, right? Okay, so I think that's pretty cool. So labor to go into salvation, rest, faith, you know, belief, uh, the peace that surpasses all understanding from the Father, uh, the joy of the Lord, which comes from Jesus, the comfort, which comes from the comforter, the Holy Ghost, right? Okay, um, so I think that's pretty cool. Now, to end it, I thought this was awesome because in these end times, many people dole themselves with drugs. Now, whether we get out of the tribulation or go through the tribulation or whatever, it's interesting to compare how Jesus dealt with tribulation that he went through on the cross and all this other stuff. He didn't dull his mind. He, he refused the sorcery that the Romans tried to give to him. Romans, Babylon, you know, you know, a new world order, all this stuff, the Illuminati, the Freemasons, all these things. They want to pump drugs into you and chemicals and technology. They want to put all this sorcery in you, right? But Jesus refused it and went through his tribulation with, with nothing, right? He did it, you know, clear-headed with the mind of Christ. And that's the way we should do it too. So, uh, well, we can see this in Matthew 27, 34. They gave him vinegar to drink mixed with guile, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Mark 15, 23, and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, um, but he re he received it not. Okay, so I think that's interesting that like like we read here that um, that they it was it was um, mingled with myrrh. The drink offered to Jesus was a cheap Roman wine. Okay, they, they, you know, they mixed it with a drug. And I think that's that's very, very interesting when you compare it. Um, okay, let me read this. The vinegar wine was offered to Jesus as, a, uh, as they filled the sponge uh, with vinegar and it put, um, and put it upon Hoppus um, and, and put it to his mouth. Hoppus was... Uh, Hoppus was of extreme significance to the Jews because it would remind the Jews of the first Passover night when um, each house among the Israelites in Egypt, uh, like the Passover. So you see that? So that also is pointing towards that, that they mixed it with that, with the myrrh and, and the hoppus and all that stuff. So you see it was drugged. It was, it was alcohol and drugs at the same time, but he refused to take it to go through all these things. And that's the way we should be in these end times. So... Um, we can see this also, how people in the end times will not stop doing these things. They will be, um, not have the mind of Christ and not repent and go through, and that's why they'll go through the Great Tribulation as unbelievers. And I believe even if we go through the Great Tribulation, if we don't, that's awesome. If we do, if we just go through half of it, that's a little bit better, you know, I mean, you know, better to go through the whole thing. If we go through the whole thing, then, um... We have to do it clear-headed and relying on the Father to take care of us, right? Okay. Because um, I don't know when the rapture is, and it's like people get in this debate, and it'll even separate everybody over this rapture debate, when it will be, when it will not be. Well, there's scriptures that make it seem like that it's before, middle, and after, 
okay? People can argue either way, that's why they're still arguing about it. And I don't think we should be so focused on our escape, we should be more focused on trying to get people saved and spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth, okay? And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And a lot of this stuff goes back to sorceries, right? A lot of people are getting killed like over religion, like uh, ISIS and all those type of things, right? But also a lot of people murder, uh, steal, commit fornication because of sorcery, because of drugs, right? Because they're not in their right mind. They'll do anything to get the drugs, right? They'll get, do anything to get money to buy the drugs. You know, they'll have sex with people to get the drugs, you know what I'm saying? So they won't repent of these things. And Jesus went through all that he went through when he could have done drugs, right? He could have drank, but he didn't, right? That speaks to me, definitely. So it's like he went through all of these things, trials, tribulations, you know, uh, the wrath of God. I mean, we don't have to go through the wrath of God, amen? So he went through all this with a clear mind. So we can we not go through our daily lives with a clear mind? I think we can, right? With the strength of Jesus and with his joy and with the peace that surpasses all understanding from the Father and, like I said, the comfort of the Holy Ghost, right? All right, well, thank you guys. I hope you all enjoyed this um, study for the last five days, I guess. Um, I enjoyed doing it. I know I repeated some of the verses over and over, but it needed to be repeated in different ways. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love, and I love God. Amen.